everyone. Um, today we're just going to um, take a look at the budget request worksheet. I'll give a general overview and then show everyone some of the uh, unique, fe unique features that are on this spreadsheet. On the screen, I have shared the email I sent out earlier this week. All forms are available in the forms and templates folder on this drive. If you have need to refer back to the original document, that's where you can find it. The work itself is quite certain of previous years, but it has a number of changes. We have, of course, a familiar outlook, a familiar form format. We have tabs at the bottom that give supplemental information. The page has a section that will auto-populate the other pages. So, for instance, if I was dental hygiene, I could write in my department name up here, my words here, will auto-populate. Hygiene here, put in George, and it will actually auto-populate the header in pages. And I will talk in a moment. The sheet is what the uh, business office will use uh, a cabinet to um, work up the entire college's request for fiscal, fiscal year 17 that's coming up to one. At the top, we have wage expenses. If current employee, like someone that's already on payroll, go ahead and leave this blank. But be sure to list everyone that's in the department. And there is. If you have adjuncts, hourlies, temporary folks, we do need to know how much we're asking for. If you have space, I do a few lines. If you need more space, if you're using any classified, go ahead and delete that category. Another option for more lines is you can right click on this number and align, push everything down this Excel to have, uh, have everything come in as a table. So another option is you can use the tab button to tab across the bottom row and get everything down. It will add another row again, similar to the show before. You can tab across and move everything down. Please use that method if you need more lines. Then your operating expenses. Operate shows up in banner as a 720. Categories are generalized categories. If you don't need a category, again, go ahead and delete it if you aren't going to use something in that category. If you need lines, again, you can insert it or across the bottom. In column, then we want to see what your budget estimate is. The next travel expenses actually come in in two spots in the center. Travel if it's state fleet vehicle, as if it used fleet.cmcc.edu to rest the state fleet vehicle, that much cost shows up in 721-120. Business this is working to get that uh, into a 740, which we will get to for the next fiscal year. Because it's built right now, we can't move it at this moment, but we'll get to it. So, expenses show up at 721120 and other travel expenses, whether a meal reimbursement, um, mileage reimbursement for or, uh, a per vehicle, that shows up in 740. If you think that, you know, you don't know what correct category it is, uh, this is why I've provided and others set at the bottom. Now, then I'll have an example for us to look at what we can do with this workbook. The sheet, same information, and you see that dental hygiene has earned money in the org. But if she, I'm not interested in the pass-through fees, that's a different process. 
what I'm looking for is sales services, sales of goods, auxiliary revenues, etc. I want to see that in the page in your anticipated revenues. These are just your historical information from fiscal year 15, fiscal year 14, and fiscal year 13. Segue into our historical data uh, tab. This brings out they're categorized in banners. It is a five. It is a revenue. It's money we've received from an outside source. A six. It's going for wages and benefits. And seven. It is an operating expense. This has only three years of fiscal information. But the totals should you see if you log into Banner and search this yourself. And for dental hygiene, they have a Rio Blanco Board of Controllers org where it's been moved in to cover salaries. So they're coming in with as a five as a revenue. So they have much money in that org. The 12121 shows made money on sales and services. So this is a revenue because these all start with five. When we get benefits, like I said, it's like salaries and benefits have all gone through that 137 org. A little bit of one year. This will give you a good look at multiple orgs and the total. You can also see that operating comes in in different spots. as travel showing up a different expense. Keep in mind that the uh, is going to change here in the near future. The eight fleet reimbursement go from that 721120, as I'm here, that into a 740. At this point, I will uh, open everything up for questions and um, go ahead and ask away. Okay. I get one's jumping to ask questions. You were maybe some of the stuff in the operating portion. I know with me being new and just kind of briefly start going over the drop down lists and all of that stuff. Just kind of walk through that because that's probably the most daunting part. So um, here we'll we'll take a look at that of your orgs. Well, what org do you have? One five one seven one. Yep. These up here give you what was approved for this current fiscal year, what approved last fiscal year, and what was actually spent last fiscal year. So this you overall doesn't mean that you have to ask that much money because that does include salaries. If you're looking at specific line items, let's say you need pens, paper. Go ahead and set line item like I have in the screen here. You're pretty that you absolutely need to have this to operate if it's related to accreditation, HLC accreditation, regular reasons, et cetera. Choose one of these items so that when we go into the budget process in the business office, know it is important for your department to operate, what your growth Etc. Okay. If you think of this into two categories, use lower number amount. For instance, if it's been related, but you all have to do it for regulation, regulatory reasons, select regulatory. If you use it to for you to operate, then of course you should tell us it's vital to operate. If you've always done this amount, tell us existing. And then, in the, like in the rest, in operate right here, here, put in their amount based on what your calculations are. Answer question. 
says, how detailed do you want this to be? Like, do you want everything to be very broken up, like per, or do you want everything lumped in? Like, for example, my advertising stuff, I can break down per advertising per different group, or do you mean to just put it all together? Like, what is what is the primary thing you're looking for? Um, the advertising as a single line. So, hopefully I spell advertising right. Um, just put it in as a total, and then during your presentation and in your CDP, what that covers. But for in this workbook, just put it as a single line item. Select what your needs are, or what the categ prioritization category is, and then plus, uh, how much you're going to spend. And then P, you will tell us what the breakout is. And if you want to go into the level of amount per broken item, do their CDP. Okay. Are there any questions? I have a question, and that's that when you get for program directors, this is the page that most of them need to work on, and they should really need to worry about the other pages unless they have revenues coming in. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Just to verify that. They really don't need the, it's more curiosity or helping them plan for this year, but they don't really need to do anything or be concerned about it unless it's like Cosmo or um, massage therapy or dental hygiene where you're charging fees. For services. Right. So one to keep in mind is that course specific fees, pass through fees, then a different process. So it will show up elsewhere. I really see here is for more of the items that are auxiliaries and sales. Um, so I have a chat question of um, what secondary and third orders can be included? Can these be passed through? Put, I would put your, um, all of your orgs that you're responsible for up here. If you have more than four, um, then do ones that are your primary four orgs. So I showed uh, dental hygiene, I had the three different orgs. That first org, uh, which was uh, their head sales and services, I did include is um, good for me as a budget manager, but for cabinet as well, to see the orgs involved with that department. Give us an overall picture so that we can see information as, for that department as a whole. Um, when, when facilities presents for the Rangeley campus, we have a lot of orgs, and the only way I can really know the story is to be able to see with the differences between years between two of the primary orgs. For everybody, so every department has its own nuances. Questions, feel free to ask away. I'll tend to answer them in a timely fashion. John? Yep. Hi, Karen, and I had a question for you. Do you want, uh, do you want us to include information like like, for example, in arts and sciences here, we have ceramics. Do you want, like, an overview of costs in ceramics and how much we think we need to add? And if so, where should that go? If you're asking if you add ceramics? Right, yeah, just as an example, in arts and sciences here, we have the ceramic studio. And the kiln is pretty expensive. It takes upkeep and money reserved to replace things on it and so on. And so I used to submit a report on its reports, one for ceramics that included the costs and the expenses and what we would be asking for and kind of giving reasons and rationale for it. Do you should I be including that type of material on this? Um, 
Um, could Judy and Donna on that one? My preference is for it to be on this piece because okay. um, we, when we drill into it uh, during spring break, we'll discussion. My preference is to put on this sheet uh, here. If or uh, Judy have a different preference, um, consult with them to see what they would like to see. Okay, thanks. Yeah, Mary Karen, this is Judy. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, what? Yeah. You need to put the items that you need or any repairs that you need on your budget sheet for sure. So that would just go under your operating expenses. You could put them under other, or you could put them under your instructional. Supplies okay. that are needed, and then in your CDP and your budget narrative, there's an area to explain any kind of new expenses. So to okay. explain that in that budget narrative on the CDP. But if okay. you want, if you need repairs or you need a new kiln, it must be shown on this budget sheet uh, for us to consider it. Does that answer your question? Yes, yeah, it did. Thank you. That made sense. Yeah, I appreciate that. I have a question that came in via chat. We do not need to add adjunct salary to the personnel column, correct? So in the personnel column, existing folks will show up here. Uh, here, any adjuncts, I do want to know how much you're expecting to spend in adjuncts, temporaries, and early folks. So please put in a dollar amount for that. If a new person, I want to open a new position, let's say custodian one, I'll just put in the title, the business office will take care of filling in a salary range and benefits. What I have to see is that's more of a variable cost because of an ad class, hourly, temporary folks. I do need to know what your Estimates for that category. For that uh, Any other questions? Judy, can you do me a favor and just click on one of the boxes in the drop-down list under the priority? Um, no, existing or new. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. If we, um, I was just going to clarify that if you want a new, let me. Know. I'll clarify that under back here staff. Anybody within your department that is currently employed and then click existing. If you want a new person within your department, a position that does not currently exist, you would list that new position. Let's say you want an, an add of, um, a history teacher. You would put a history instructor and then mark uh, new. New, right? Yes. Just to clarify, that's how we're doing that. Thank you. Yep. Um, I want to make mention that before I forget, that the um, recruiting and marketing type requests, working with the marketing department and the recruiting department, so let, let them know you've got some ideas, and they put it in their budget request. Okay. Shouldn't include anything in our marketing budget. Correct. Okay. Yeah, we we'll work with uh, the marketing department for marketing type requests, and uh, that'll show up in their CDP. Okay, great. Johnny again. Um, the other question that I have is, Doc, I know, CDP uh, level, we don't want them to create an arbitrary a number for copies either, correct? We're going to, to budget the copies. So you know in the supplies it says copies, postage, et cetera. I don't know how many Rangeley folks we have on here. But we risk one 
uh, office supplies or classroom supplies, pens, markers, paper clips. Try to calculate how many copies you'll think you're going to make at five cents a copy. Because that's a huge number across 50 some departments budgeted, and we don't have any idea if that's a real number. So, right on, do not include copies in that. Correct. I have. Calculation for how much it costs the Rangely folks for copies and printing. Carry that in the business office request. Okay. okay. So that concludes uh, the walkthrough. Um, I did record this session. I'm going to stop recording now. But I will stay on this uh, Quebec. Good, everybody.